To assemble the pump, a worker begins with the first part of the two-part body. The worker applies glue to the shaft sleeve and inserts it into a channel from the front. Next, they insert a lantern ring into the same channel from the back. The worker places a bearing on top of the lantern ring. Then, from the other side, they insert one more bearing. The worker inserts the pump shaft through all the bearings in the channel. The bearings minimize friction, enabling the shaft to rotate smoothly. Along with this retaining clip, the bearings also prevent the shaft from moving up and down or shifting side by side with the pump's movement. Workers take the second part of the pump's body and glue a bronze plate called a diaphragm into a groove at the top. Then they join the two parts of the body, placing a gasket in between to prevent leaks. The gasket is made of special gasket paper, like the type used in car engine piping. The workers fasten the two parts of the body with 10 massive bolts and install a heavy-duty steel spring in a groove in the shaft. A steel cap keeps the spring firmly in position. The worker compresses the spring with a tool and inserts a bronze stem bushing. This spring loading is critical because it enables the disc to adapt to thin or thick liquids without clogging or getting damaged. Now, they mount the hollow disc onto the bushing and bolt on the front cover. When the motor turns the pump shaft, the hollow disc oscillates around the diaphragm, which acts as a barrier, separating the suction side of the pump from the discharge side. This plate covers where the customer will later install a safety valve. The oscillating hollow disc produces suction, which pulls liquid through the inlet port, then out the opposite side through the outlet port. The disc can also rotate in reverse, so that liquid can be loaded or unloaded using the same pump.